Hey everyone and welcome to Boston Auto Blog. It's a rarity in the automotive industry to have an overnight success. But for Volkswagen, the Atlas has been just that. Last year, Volkswagen sold right around 80,000 of these in the United States, which really considering how much competition is in this segment, that's rather impressive. Now in 2020, we have the Atlas Crossport, which provides a new twist to the Atlas nameplate. Instead of three rows, we have two, and we have a nice sleek exterior that you could make the argument kind of looks like the Audi Q8 and the Lamborghini Urus. However, the Atlas Crossport isn't technically related because it's built on the MQB platform, whereas the Q8 and the Urus are not. The Atlas Crossport finds itself in a new growing segment with rivals such as the Honda Passport and the Chevrolet Blazer. But most journalists agree that the closest competitor to the Atlas Crossport is the Ford Edge. All the models I just listed have the same thing in common. They're sporty, they're sleek, and also very fun to drive. So in this video, we're gonna check out the Atlas Crossport and see why it might be the perfect crossover for you. Now, before I get in this review, I'd like to thank Quirk Volkswagen in Braintree, Massachusetts for allowing me to do this review. Their link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Volkswagen inventory. And so, without wasting any further time, Let's get right in this review. As utility and practicality continue to play significant roles in the buying decision for many Americans, the injection of sportiness, not only in styling, but also in driving dynamics, has helped reshape and in some cases, redefined the crossover segment. Near the end of last decade, we began seeing three-row SUVs get two-row variants that were either more aggressive in appearance or offered an increase in exhilaration for drivers who desired to have a crossover that could also be fun to own. At the same time, German brands are offering sportback SUVs to entice buyers away from sports sedans, with models such as the BMW X4 and X6, Audi Q8, and the Mercedes-Benz GLC Coupe. However, these vehicles aren't the most affordable to own, but that's where the Volkswagen Atlas Crossport comes in to seamlessly fill a void and market that hasn't been saturated. Despite sharing the same nameplate, there are some obvious differences between the standard Atlas and the Crossport when it comes to dimensions. With a sleeker roofline, the Crossport is two inches shorter and two inches lower in height than the three row variant. And while you may be sacrificing headroom, interior room is abundant in more ways than one, which we'll check out later in this video. For pricing, the Alice Crossport comes in right around $1,000 more affordable, with the model we have today starting just above $43,000. Up front, the Atlas Crossport gave journalists their first glimpse at the new fascia for the 2021 Atlas earlier this year. This new appearance is what we're beginning to see across the Volkswagen lineup, with three chrome bars going across the front grille and a more streamlined headlight integration with the rest of the design. This is giving the Atlas a less boxy and squared off body and adds a more youthful and active vibe that may draw in new buyers who don't necessarily need a larger crossover with three rows. The crossbar will come standard with LED headlights and instead of having the fog lights on the lower portion of the front bumper, they'll be integrated into the headlight housing for more upscale and classier road presence. Volkswagen does offer the R-Line badge for the Atlas, going with aggressive design qualities that should attract an outgoing and enthusiast demographic. Moving over to the side profile, 
the model we have today is sitting on 20 inch alloy wheels with the ability to upgrade to 21s if you go with the SEL premium trim. You'll get body color folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. Coming around to the back, the Alice Cross Sports coupe-like rear end is arguably the design feature that will draw everyone's attention. The lower roof line certainly gives this crossover a unique appearance and sets it apart from the more boxy standard Atlas. Unlike up front, the taillight design is unique to the Crossport and differs from the 2021 3 row Atlas very slightly. However, a rounded rear fascia brings a modernized look to both variants. Under the hood, the Atlas Crossport we have today is powered by a 3.6 liter V6 engine that puts out 276 horsepower and 266 pound-feet of torque and is paired with an 8-speed automatic transmission. Just like with the three-row Atlas, a two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine will come standard, which will achieve 235 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. For the drivetrain, front-wheel drive does come standard, but our model has Volkswagen's four-motion all-drive system, giving drivers better year-round versatility, particularly in colder regions of the United States. When it comes to fuel efficiency, you can expect to receive right around 16 miles per gallon in the city and 22 miles per gallon on the highway. But if fuel range is a priority, the four-cylinder engine would make for a better choice. Inside, you're given power adjustable heated leatherette seats for both the driver and passenger for the SEL trim. By spending a little extra for the SEL premium, these seats will be upgraded to real leather to go along with them also being ventilated. The driver's side will be three position memory for added convenience. You'll get a tilt and telescopic steering column to help you find the most comfortable position when behind the wheel. For all cross sports with the SEL badge, drivers will receive Volkswagen's virtual cockpit, replacing the analog gauges found on lower trims. Similar to Audi's virtual cockpit, the onboard navigation can be displayed here, which isn't yet programmed on our model and you can also turn some safety features on or off from the menus as well. This screen can be customized to display a variety of information and functions very similar to other user interfaces found in the Volkswagen family. New for 2020 Volkswagen models is a redesign for the steering wheel with Volkswagen's new emblem taking center stage. Functionality doesn't change with this new look as the button layout is almost identical to Volkswagen vehicles of the past. On the left will be the cruise control settings and driver assistance technologies, while on the right are the buttons for Volkswagen's virtual cockpit and heated steering wheel. Moving over to the infotainment system, the SEL trim will be equipped with the upgraded 8-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, along with onboard navigation. This user interface can be found throughout the Volkswagen lineup and offers a clean and very easy to use layout with quick access buttons found on either side of the screen for better accessibility to different menus. A cool feature that caught my attention was the ability to customize the gauges for the digital display. So rather than being limited to the traditional gauge cluster look, you can display information most relevant to you during your journeys behind the wheel. You'll get a rear backup camera with trajectory to go along with front and rear parking sensors. If you decide to option for the SEL Premium, you will get a top view camera for added safety. Below, you'll find the dials and buttons for your dual zone climb control and three level heated seats, providing a more traditional layout in an era when most of these settings can be accessed through the touchscreen. As we work our way towards the center console, you'll find a cubby for your smartphone and two USB inputs. The Cross Sport wouldn't be a crossover without the drive mode selector so you can tackle different types of terrain and road conditions. And lastly, for the center console, you'll have the electric parking brake and the button for your park assist features. For the center storage compartment, you'll find more than enough room for small items. And rounding out the front seating area, a panoramic moonroof will let in a lot of natural light. Now for passengers in the back, we're gonna start off with the driver's side. And this seat is adjusted to someone of my height around 5'5". Five five. And I have, an unbelievable amount of room here. Now there is a joke going around in the automotive industry that the reason why they called it the cross sport is because you could literally cross your legs 
while you're sitting back here. And that's exactly what I'm doing. My legs are crossed. But I also try that on the passenger side and I could still cross my legs, even at my height and even adjusting the seat all the way back. This is unbelievable, the amount of room that you have. Now, Volkswagen is known to do that. Even with their Volkswagen Passat, the Passat has a lot of legroom to work with. Same with the Arteon. So what Volkswagen does is really maximizes as much room as you possibly can in the interior. And I have to say, this is by far the most amount of legroom I've ever had in a vehicle I've reviewed on this channel. Now, for the person in the center, there really isn't any center hump at all, but there's some great placements for my feet, and there is no question that you could fit a third person back here, uh, for sure. There's enough room, even for people who might be broader shouldered. This vehicle is wide enough for definitely maybe average or maybe people under, or maybe adults that are not average height, uh, could definitely fit back here. Now, I also noticed too that I do have some headroom here, even with the panoramic sunroof. So I do think people, uh, you know, maybe around me six foot tall, maybe a little higher than that, won't have to slouch at all. So there's a lot of room here, even with the sportier roof line or the, the low roof line. So this is definitely very practical for a lot of different sizes of people. And then for the passenger side, I adjust the seat all the way back, and I also kind of recline to a point that most normal people would be sitting in, and I still have a, a ridiculous amount of room here. I can still cross my legs, which is just amazing. It really truly is. Uh, this vehicle is very practical in many ways in one. If you do have a growing family, this most certainly works, especially if you don't need a third row. Overall, when it comes to uh, you know passenger volume and cargo volume, this vehicle is all around practical. Also back here, we do get two rear air vents along with two USB inputs. And rounding out the rear seating area, we do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now for rear cargo space, this is where owning the Alice Cross Sport really has its advantages. So with the rear seat's up, you get right around 40 cubic feet of rear cargo, which is right in line with a lot of its competitors, particularly the Passport and also the Ford Edge. But with the rear seats folded down, that space almost doubles in size to 78 cubic feet. So there's plenty of room back here, especially if you're the type of person that wants to go off-road, that wants to go to the mountains, that wants to go on adventures, or maybe you just carry a lot of stuff with you at all times. Now the Alice Cross Sports base price is right around $31,000. So if practicality is really uh, a top priority, then I think going with the Atlas over the Tiguan makes more sense, especially when you look at the cargo uh, room differences. Now, what I also like too is that we have uh, little cargo cubbies on either side of the floor mat. So if any smaller items or maybe even water bottles or whatever you're carrying with you, you can put them right there and you don't need to worry about them being thrown around or maybe spilling onto your more valuable items. And lastly, you do get a rear cargo cover, which keeps all your valuable items out of sight so if you do leave your vehicle unattended, you don't need to worry about someone peeking in and stealing what you have. So for me, if I have my camera gear back here, I had that peace of mind knowing that my stuff won't get stolen. And then once you're done, just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. So at the end of the day, I think the final verdict here is that the Alice Crossport really is a very spacious vehicle. I have plenty of shoulder room up front Passengers in the back can literally cross their legs even with the passenger seat adjusted all the way back. I think that's one of the reasons why the Alice Cross Sport is named just that because you can cross your legs. And also you have plenty of cargo room as well. So I think it's definitely more practical if you need an extra utility or you go on uh, adventures very frequently and you don't need that third row. What I also like too is that Volkswagen's interiors are still very simplistic, but you still get a nice touch of technology. So we have the digital display on the SEL trim, and I love the Volkswagen digital cockpit because it's very reminiscent to what Audi has in their vehicles. You also have a very simplistic layout for the dashboard and the infotainment system, and we're, ver we're very used to this infotainment system in older uh, Volkswagen models as well. So you get the same setup in the GTI, even the GLI and the uh, Jetta as well. And I just really like this clean layout, especially where a lot of consumers really don't want to have everything go digital or go uh, buttonless. So you do have buttons for your three level heated seats. You have dials for your dual zone climb control. And I just think the simplicity definitely works 
in an era where everything is all about technology going digital. And I think there's a lot of customers who definitely appreciate that. Also keep in mind that the Alice Cross Sport is the most affordable option you can go with on the market if you want to have a sport back crossover. Because I think the next step up would be BMW with the X4 and you're looking at a price range of around $51,000. That's right exactly where the Alice Cross Sport ends in terms of price range and where BMW's X4 comes into play. And then of course for Audi you're looking at paying uh, a premium for the Q8. And then I think even with the Porsche Macan, even with the Sportback look, you're still paying somewhere around fifty to sixty thousand dollars. So if you are looking for a Sportback and sporty appearance, then the Alice Cross Sport is the most affordable option you can go with, and also the best option because it's really the only option you have at around thirty to forty thousand dollars. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time.